can begin. presenting today is made of Rita and Omar. And today we are here to talk about our spreadable media campaign that we created for Respect for Animals. So firstly, we would like to explain the reasoning for choosing this specific brief. There were many reasons, but the most important ones are that there's, there are ethical issues concerning this topic. And there's an uh, ongoing debate regarding this area, as it will be discussed later in the presentation. Also, there are many non-profit campaigns concerning this issue, which also highlights the importance of it. Social commitment also played a part as we wanted to be involved with this movement. But most of all, the main reason for choosing this brief is for the protection of animals. So now we would like to give you a quick synopsis of our campaign. Our campaign name is End the Horror. It is a spreadable media campaign which emphasizes the violent nature of the fur trade by using cinematic trailers from horror genre. The aim of this campaign is to reverse the human-animal dynamic and to encourage viewers to engage in a wider social media strategy. So, this presentation will cover our findings, our competitors, other organizations working in this sector. Uh, we are going to talk about the fashion as well, and we'll introduce you with our big idea. <coughs> so, to have, <coughs> sorry, to have a, the more notion about what the industry is about, uh, we did a bit of research. Uh, it is an industry of gore, of death, unfortunately. Uh, the majority um, exporting fur farms are located in Europe and North America, and wild fur is produced mostly in North America and which is also called first world countries. Uh, the fur farms are terrible for animals. Um, the majority of animals raised or fur live in fur farms. They are kept in small cages, emotionally and physically they are distressed, they have no living conditions. Uh, food and water, they're not fit for consumption. Uh, food most of the times is rotten. Water is uh, full of bacteria and during the winter time, uh, the drips from the water, they freeze so the animals don't even get access to water. Um, other Capture wild fur uh, poachers and hunters. They use fur traps. Uh, 
that they use to capture animals that they cannot grow in the farm. Uh, once kept, they are left there for days uh, because they don't check them regularly, they don't have that care. One of four uh, animals trapped in these traps uh, they escape by chewing off their legs and paws, which by escaping they end up dying anyways of blood loss, gangrene, or being hunted down by other predators. 50% uh, of the trapped animals uh, they're not even used for fur for the industry. Uh, most of them the domestic animals such as cats and dogs that cut off. Uh, in these farms, the killing methods they are different. Uh, we have gassing, neck snapping, the compression chambers, poison, oral or anal electrocution. These are methods that prevent the damaging of the fur. Um, gassing and the, comp the compression chambers usually are used in small animals. Uh, and most of these methods, they're not 100% functional, so the animals wake up while it's <coughs> so yes, and when it came to finding information on fur within fashion, what we found out is that the fashion scene highly depends on fur clothing. It is believed that over 50 million animals are killed every year for the fashion satisfaction. And it also takes up to 200 harmless chinchillas in order to make a 140 inch coat through really their harmless skin flick fur. Now that fear is considered to be such an hit item, animals have now been categorized according to the most promoted and demanded fear, a sable, mink, and chinchilla stay up on top of the fear list. Also, the major fear producers are located in the USA, Canada, and Scandinavian countries, and then the fears of the animals are usually auctioned off in NYC, St. St. Petersburg, and Montreal, where bidders are allowed to purchase with based on satisfaction. Also, this goes into how the increasement of the fashion industry. So, fear within fashion, with fear within fashion is becoming bigger than ever. As you can see down below, it says 73% of 436 fashion shows in New York, Paris, Milan, and London featured fear last year. Moreover, it's not a shock that many designers sport the use of fear. High-end designers that are considered to be the most elite designers, such as Fendi, Hermes, and Chanel, have been using fear for many years. Karl Lagerfeld also, also debuted one collection that was completely dedicated to fur clothing. He has made it public that he does support the use of fur as he stated that, for me, as long as people eat and wear leather, I don't get the message. However, there's also a number of designers that don't use fur within their collections and are taking actual action. The more commercial and known designers <coughs> such as Jenna McCartney and Tommy Hilfiger don't support the use of fur for fashion as well as celebrities down below that are not seen as much as fashion icons. So the celebrities on the left-hand side, such as Kim Kardashian, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, and Kanye West, the more known icons are obviously supporting fur within fashion because they're constantly in the media real and fair with it, yeah. So our competitors, just brought their arms. <laughs> uh, the most known um, organization is PETA. Uh, it's a UK's UK-based uh, charity foundation. They protect all animals. Their motto is animals are not ours to eat, wear, experiment on, use for entertainment, or abuse in any other way. Uh, they use non-violent protests and stunts. They're very famous for it, uh, using humans to portray animal suffering. For their campaigns, they usually uh, use celebrity to endorse their message and to create awareness within the media. They're very keen on public education about animal cruelty as well. Uh, another of our competitors is Fur Free Alliance, which is a coalition of 40 animal uh, protection organizations. They focus especially on fur-bearing animals, and they're very keen to uh, educate the public uh, about the conditions of fur farming. They take um, legal actions against those that don't follow legislation. They try to create new legislation to animal rights as well, which involves in-depth investigation, usually going undercover to reveal this sort of factors. Um, their campaigns, uh, they could be joint or individual, uh, national, worldwide, uh, depends on the topic 
um, and on the issues of the countries. Some coalition members are Born Free USA, For Free uh, South Africa, uh, RSPCA uh, United Kingdom, and Futa Russia. <coughs> so for our brain findings, the conclusion of our research, let us know that fur farms are cruel to animals, there's no decent living conditions and they, they suffer painful deaths. Um, the fur industry is a economical monster. Uh, it's hard to tackle because it involves a lot of money. Uh, fur product sales alone goes for $35.8 billion dollars, and fur farming is evaluated at $7.8 billion, dollars, which raises a big issue because when you try to mess with economical force of the country, it's, it kind of becomes a big deal for that country to protect. Uh, millions of animals are killed for the sake of fashion. Uh, and for that, that's the main reason why fur production still continues to exist. Which brings us to the fact that a number of animals are facing extinction. Uh, particularly uh, wild spotted cats, such as tigers. Uh, other animals such as uh, otters, uh, fur seals, they're also facing extinction. Uh, but now they, they do have uh, international legislation law that protects uh, animals that are endangered species, which doesn't exclude hunters and poachers to kill them. We also found out that the biggest names of the celebrity world the ones that are probably role models to our younger generations are the ones that portray the fur usage. They display it as a fashion icon. And it creates a never-ending debate on ethics and moral standards. So let's get to our big idea now. We have created a horror movie trailer which illustrates the reality of animal lives in the fur industry. In this trailer, humans are used to represent animal suffering. The intent of this trailer is to shock the audience with the end twist that you will see yourself shortly. The purpose of this advert is to promote respect for animals message and spread awareness. Okay guys, um, here's the exciting part. Uh, we are going to show you our trailer uh, advert or end the horror campaign, but first we need to <laughs> warn you. <laughs> so the following images are extremely graphic. They depict blood, gore, scenes of extreme violence. Your discretion is strongly advised. So uh, yeah, it's because they had a problem with buffering in the last presentation, so if you minimize it. Do you, do you want you me to try, try it? Try it, try it, okay. yeah. I don't know about the sound, but... Hey, the sound is working. Experience this 
on their on daily basis in fair trade industry. So yes, the strategy of the campaign is a video advert embedded in social media such as Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. We would plan to launch our campaign at the beginning of London Fashion Week and target those who wear fit as well as those who want to take action and may not understand much on the fur industry but care for the topic. With the tone of voice which is conveyed in the campaign, we hope that this will help individuals to realise how animals actually suffer just for fur clothing. We wanted to emphasise on the theme of despair and disturbance to wake people up, hence the use of shocking cinematic clips. So, at the end of the advert, you can see that people are invited to join the movement through various social media platforms. So, for our social media strategy, um, we chose to use horror filters to promote End the Horror campaign. The filters will be available on Facebook, Snapchat and Instagram. Academically, our idea is supported by Jenkins, as he states, if it doesn't spread, it's dead. So guys, there are a few examples of our social media filters. The first one is a temporary uh, profile photo for Facebook. And the second one is end the horror filter for Instagram, which would encourage users to take a photo with their fairy friends and then apply end the horror filter to spread awareness. To continue our social media strategy, we would collaborate with social media influencers who are known for their fashion and lifestyle influence and who have a large number of followers. We would re request them that they raise awareness of End of the Horror campaign by using relevant hashtags. Additionally, to social media influencers, we will seek out celebrity endorsement as well to increase the chance of getting earned media and get as many media impressions as possible. The overall goal of our social media strategy is to promote End the Horror campaign <laughs> to raise social awareness about the fair industry through engagement on various social media platforms. So here you can see an example of our Snapchat filter being applied by social media influencer Zoella. As funny as she looks there, but it would probably, <laughs> she would probably look sadder in the photo. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, fun. We know it's illustrative. <laughs> So another tactic for our strategy is to apply native advertising, as Jenkins well states. Uh, think of activist groups who want to reach beyond their core group of supporters. In each case, they build direct appeals to their fans to help them spread the content, rather than constructing provision on grassroots circulation. Meaning that we want to go beyond the people that are aware of this message. So we would embed our campaign in different websites, platforms, uh, such as BuzzFeed. We would create, for example, a little quiz to promote our campaign uh, for people to find out their horror story and with that linking them to our advert and promoting our message. Within uh, Facebook, we would embed our advert, our sponsored content um, in the feed news and raise awareness to end the horror campaign uh, and display our little horror trailer to create shock and awareness. So our campaign touch points consists of the launch, engagement and promoting UGC. The campaign will be launched at the beginning of London Fashion Week as I mentioned before. We intend to publicize the campaign on social media with the help of influencers who can help to show awareness by participating in our bespoke filters. We then hope to publicize our content on fashion websites and blogs. And the engagement of the campaign Users will be promoted to engage with the campaign by taking selfies on Snapchat, <coughs> Instagram and Facebook and apply in the horror filters to raise awareness of the horror animals experience in the fur industry. 
Do you expect with this engagement um, to create a lot of user-generated content and through the website of Respect for Animals uh, get a lot of visitors um, leading to uh, increase of earned media, followers and awareness of our message with all the retweets, shares of our campaign and yes, bring a lot of new people to this for action. Uh, our strategy it can be refreshed with new media content and social media filters. Uh, it could be this campaign could be a first stage of a series of horror trailers, uh, and we could create new and divided filters uh, within the year to bring more people to join and hopefully get media coverage as well. Fur is not a luxury, it is an industry of death and suffering. And with that note, we thank you.